Hey guys, I'm Coxie. Three years ago, I obtained all pets in the game, and now it's time to run it back. A fresh new account with no stats or items, starting from scratch, with one goal in mind, speedrunning all pets as fast as possible. This is Funny Feelings. Holy crap, it is finally here. Day one, morning one of our new adventure has officially began today. I have been so excited for this series and it has been nonstop in my head for literally months now. Three years ago, I finished all pets on my main account, Malfoy. And since then, I've been passing the time playing Iron Man, Hardcore Iron Man, and Hardcore Group Iron Man. But nothing has really ever fixed my RuneScape itch quite like pet hunting on a main account has. In the last three years, we've gotten some updates that have absolutely massively changed the pet hunting metas. And also in the last three years, as a player base, we've became very smart, you know? There, there really aren't that many updates. So we've had a lot of time to optimize and uh, really, really make these methods insane. When I first saw Hebox Jong and JCW's Max Cape speedrun, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was watching how successful they were. I loved the videos. I'm extremely invested in the series and the aspect of like going fast, but I'm absolutely not a skiller by any means. So I wanted to kind of take that idea and adapt it into pet hunting. I am excited to announce my first ever YouTube series. We will be doing an all pet speedrun from scratch. In this series, I'll be starting from a fresh account straight off Tutorial Island. I'll be starting with zero GP and everything I want to buy or obtain will have to be made from the account. I'm not allowing transferring GP, I'm not allowing transferring armor, no loans, no giveaways, no donations, nothing. If I want to buy it on my account, I need to make the money on the account for it. That is the biggest and um, hardest kind of rule we are setting for this account. Anything that I can take advantage of through having accept aid on is allowed. My alt accounts that I've made and progressed, I will not be forced to make money to fund the gear and supplies on those accounts. Boosting and alting are terms we're gonna be using often in this series. So let's explain them because a lot of people confuse the two terms and I'll be using them throughout this entire series. Boosting is a service that you pay someone else, OSRS GP, and their sole purpose is to help speed up your kills per hour at bosses. It doesn't have to be a bosses, it can be anywhere in the game. Boosting is a service you pay someone and they help you in a quality of life or an efficient way. When I use the term alting, I'm gonna be referring to a single person playing a main account and multiple other accounts at the same time whose purpose is to speed up the kills per hour for that main account. Boosting is not off limits for me, but because of the high boosting prices and the fact that I'm starting off with zero GP, the likelihood that I boost many things is going to be very low. Corp is the most efficient thing to boost in the game. If I do have excess GP, I will probably look into boosting corp, but this is going to be a situational thing depending on what my bank value, what my money is looking like towards the end of this series. Realistically, I'm gonna be taking the difficult route of learning how to efficiently use my alts to get high kills per hour on my main account. This way, I'm gonna be forced to put more effort into this series, and it's something that I've always wanted to learn how to how to play Altscape in, in an efficient way. Now, those are the rules we have for this series. A lot of questions have already came up asking, why aren't you just doing an any percent speed run? Why are you doing a speed run, but not like a full blown speed run? I didn't wanna do an any percent speed run where I could just transfer billions of GP over to my account and boost every single pet in the game. This would require me to be fully reliant off my booster schedule, and doing it from scratch, I think the sense of gear and money progression throughout the series is going to be very rewarding for me. And I think it's going to be a way that I'm gonna enjoy playing this account in this series more. These are the rules I have set for my series. This is the way I think I'm gonna enjoy playing the series the most. It's a balance of added difficulty while still allowing me to feel like I'm playing a main account. And I hope that you guys can see that. And I hope that you guys are just as excited for this as I am. Oh baby, we are finally here. It is day one. The amount of excitement I have had throughout the last few months just to be in this exact moment is unreal. First order of operations, winter event. Quick and easy, five minute tops, 200K GP from the rewards sold on the GE, but I do have to wait 48 hours after my account creation. Thank you Mod Ash for the nice little Christmas present. All right, game plan going forward questing today this is day one a lot of questing i want to get to winter todd so we're going to start working on fire making i was able to get 50 fire making from the logs that i chopped and from my cheeky birds nests 
Thank you very much. Plague City completed. I cannot believe the government would ever lie to their citizens. How dare they? That is so unlike any government out there. All right, we are at Winter Todd. Finally, first few crates opened. Not much, but no, just Winter Todd loot. Hey, yo, our first pyromancer piece on the oh my god. Yo, look at me right now and tell me I am not just soaking with drip. God damn. Ooh, a second piece to the Pyromancer outfit has been obtained. Oh my God, we are a unit. Oh, yo, a third piece of Pyromancer coming on very early. <gasps> oh my Lord. 72 fire making 56 kc the first big unique has finally been dropped this thing is almost a million gp okay this right here doubles my cash stack this right here is going to help so much with funding early skilling and um getting my magic up 75 fire making flying on in Gertrude's cat completed. The first pet on the account officially. No way. Don't take my bow. Oh! <gasps> God damn it. If I have to go back and kill everything, re get a ball, get a new key to get inside. Oh, well, there's the first incident on the account. And there's Witch's House done. I always love doing this quest on a new account because it means you finally have HP. <laughs> Tourist trap done. This quest gives such great starting XP rewards and it is all going to be dumped on agility. Nice little 26 agility right away. Haven't even trained it yet. Easy going. Fight arena completed. First combat stats on the account. Many more to come. Trinome Village, great quest, top tier. All right, we need to get 43 prayer. Thankfully I'm a main and I can buy the bones off the GE with the little GP I have. And thankfully the wilderness altar exists, which gives cracked XP per bone. Overhead should take no time at all. Thirty strength, forty attack. Okay. Nice little forty-two thieving. This is a mandatory RFD requirement. I think the first big thing I'm gonna do is rush Barrow's gloves. Barrow's gloves on any account is uh, just extremely beneficial, especially early on in the game. And biohazard completed. I love this quest line. I think the whole west already prif expansion underground pass this whole quest line is just so great dig site done we are getting closer and closer to rfd requirements it's mod lottie the drunk mod lottie hello two pints already cloak one we have a great teleport to this part of the game and another one Shiloh Village is done. The feud has been completed. This is going to push us into 45 thieving, and we can now thieve from Desert Bandits, which is going to be our thieving method for quite a while. All right, we officially have one day played on the account, 24 whole hours. Now, I don't want to admit how many, uh, you know, real life days playing 24 hours took me so let, let's not admit that but uh everything's looking good stats are looking good quest points are definitely looking good we are 42 quest points so far and stats we are 638 total level pushing our way nice and quick towards barrows gloves let us continue a nice base 50 fishing All right, 40 smithing, another Barrow's Gloves requirement finished. 
All right, 50 mining has been obtained. Nice, quick, and easy at the arty iron ore spot. 50 mining is one of the last requirements we have for Barrow's Gloves. We'll be doing 48 agility, and then we will be speedrunning quests to get to 175 quests. That is not my pet. To get to 175 quest points. Yo, Dragon Slayer completed. One step closer to Barrow's Gloves. We are 109 quest points. And one of the most, if not arguably, the most nostalgic quest out of the way. First part of RFD completed. Nice. Death Dorkishin done. Yo, Animal Magnetism completed. One step closer to Barrow's Gloves. Plus, our first Ava Attractor. Oh my lord. Look at us. We are a fucking unit. I don't care what anyone says. Underground Pass is the best quest in the game, the most nostalgic quest in the game, right up there with Monkey Madness 1. I remember doing this quest right near the release. I don't think I did it on the release, but definitely within the year. Such a great quest, so much nostalgia. It's so punishing and so annoying, but that's just what makes it so great. We have our Ecto file. Very, very big, excited for that. Watchtower done, 129 quest points, 850 total level, and 50 magic. Monkey Madness 1 out of the way. Absolutely love this quest. Any new account I've cr always created, uh, Monkey Madness 1 is usually like the first big thing I'm looking forward to in the, in the beginning week. We of course put it on attack and defense. Getting that D skimmy on as quick as possible is the most important thing. Sorry about the strength level, but D skimmy DPS is insane over rune. 45 agility. Frammy trials done. Dude, speaking of nostalgic quests, this is a nostalgic quest, but I'm gonna keep it real. Frammy trials is just not it. Frammy trials just feels like a worse version of one small favor. One small favor, but you don't get great rewards at the end. You just gotta talk to f***ing everybody, man. It is just not, this quest is not it. Glad to have it done. Don't want to do it again. All right, Houston, we have an issue. So I'm out of money and I need 55 magic. I need 55 magic so I can start passively training magic while I'm running throughout the game. Low Alk is just not it at the moment. And I kind of need money. I, I can't really afford to buy anything. I've kind of gone myself broke doing doing uh, RFD requirements. So I'm going to sit at Lava Dragons. I'm going to just chill out, do Lava Dragons from 50 to 55. I'm going to be making profit um, on training magic. It's going to get me to 55 and then 55 on. I can break even with Alking and passively train it throughout the rest of the account while I'm questing. Mmm, only 34 Lava Dragons. I made 410k. That is already like triple my bank value. Finishing out with 200k spare cash. This is beautiful. One step closer to Barrow's Gloves, Warp Face and Bent Nose. Please enjoy your slop. Farid. No. Oh my god, wait. We are done with Desert Treasure. Thank the Lord. All right, 175 quest points. 62 magic. Let's get out of here and get ready for the fights. Holy fucking free! All right, B gloves obtained in six days. Oh my god! Thank Frank, this is over. Holy! Oh, yo, Pyromancer is fully completed. We have a great start to the account. Barrows gloves obtained. Quest points are looking good. Stats are looking good. 
full pyro obtained. Now it is time we go for our first proper pet hunt. We are going to be thieving until we get it. All gas, no brakes. To set this up, you'll only want two alts. Alt 1's main job is to hold the lure of the five market guards behind either of the two southern fences. You'll want to tag the guards on Alt 2, run behind the fence, lose aggro, and then tag that trapped guard on Alt 1 with a simple spell like Windstrike. Repeat this for all five guards. Next step, on Alt 1, you'll be trapping the fishmonger anywhere behind this line. On Alt 2, on the west side of the stalls, you'll be trapping the fur trader anywhere behind this line. Now that the method is all set up, the pet hunter account can steal from these four stalls for a roughly 1 in 34,000 chance at this pet. Utilize these four tiles I have marked for optimal pathing that will save you a tick each rotation. Remember to bring staminas and drop your stall loot while running back and forth. First few levels of Relica stalls have been flying by at 50k an hour. 65 is kind of our first nice base thieving level that we've gotten. We started 53 and 12 quick levels out of the way. Oh my, you son of a bitch. You dressed up in full ghost outfit too, you freak. Hey. 40 hunter our first birdhouse milestone birdhouses will be a thing we will be doing birdhouses for a while um i'm pretty sure we'll be doing birdhouses all the way to 80 hunter before ever even touching any of the hunter skill 70 thieving five more levels this method is very nice very easy and uh, the levels are flying by so far all of this GP being strictly from bird's nests and the seeds inside of them just in the last week to two weeks. Fantastic start to the account. Great cash. 50 smithing. Don't call me a freak, please. But I like Blast Furnace. The first 50 levels are bad because you got to pay him every 10 minutes to even be in the room. But I tell you what, Blast Furnace is just one of those things. Once you get in a cycle, it is so smooth. He smited me. No. All right. Oh my gosh, tonight has been a wild night. Legends Quest is done. Don't ask, I had to do Legends Quest left-handed. Okay, I know this is supposed to be a speed run. I probably wasted 30 minutes on this quest having to do it left-handed. I died once in the worst way possible because my reaction time is that of a snail with my right hand. With my left hand, it's even worse than a snail. But the good thing is Legends Quest now has boosted XP rewards. Shout out Jagex and it's giving us a nice 59 agility. Gosh, that agility level is so high. We have trained like no agility so far. 25 hours into Relica stalls officially. All right, I don't want to jinx it. This is the pet rate of Relica stalls. We have officially hit it. I hope I don't go too dry, but we are officially overrate on the first pet 25 hours in. What in the f is this? What in the absolute f is this? Animal adoption certificate raccoon? I adopted a f raccoon? Nah. And regicide done. Nice and easy quest. Access to Tyrion win. And one of my favorite quests in the game finally finished. One small favor, I really don't like how much hate one small favor gets. One small favor is not that bad, especially with teleports and staminas. It is not that bad. XP rewards are booming from it. Love the quest. You know what? I'd do it again. 20k free XP, both going in agility. Gosh, I have trained like no agility so far, and we're already 60. A D thieving, please. 
Don't make me go too dry on this. Okay, 60 attack. Now, I did go and buy it on my main account because I wanted to stay at Crabs. I'm already here. I am going to pay the price of it that I would in the GE. 60 attack, we have access to de-skimming. Combat stats are going to get up. I'm probably going to crab for a little bit. I'm not going to do much crabbing on this account, but um, I, I don't really want to start Slayer without even a, a, a de-skimmy. So while I'm getting the clips ready for this video, I'm going to AFK crabs just for a little bit. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm just sat here watching Survivor right now. First pet on the account. What? I'm like trying not to scream as well because it is late at night. Oh my lord. No fucking way. No. No! We have it! The very first pet on the account. The very first pet, dude. Holy sh Alrighty, time for the best part. Throughout this entire series, after each pet, I'm probably gonna give a quick 30 second segment talking about the pet rate, talking about my total XP or KC gained along the way, and talking about my luck or unluck on this specific pet. This is something that's interesting to me. I did study statistics in undergrad. Just bear with me. It'll be nice and quick and I'll simplify it. Total XP gained along the way at Relic Crystals was 3,911,848. Average XP per stall is 39 XP, leading me to have thieved 100,304 total stalls. The Rocky drop rate does change based on your level, but it changes very slightly. At level 87, the level that I ended up getting Rocky Pet, my rate was 1 in 34,315 stalls. Interpreting what's on screen right now, by the amount of stalls that I looted, if I were to repeat this simulation a large number of times, I would have gotten at least one Rocky Pet 94.623% of the time, leading me to be pretty unlucky in this scenario. Thank you guys for watching. I am so stoked for this series. It is going to be a long one, so buckle up.